Okay, we're back to our, our, let's say that our image has been uploaded into Photoshop. And what I did is I used the pull down menu for image, image, and I clicked on image size, and this is the, the box that I got. So you'll see that the image as it comes to Photoshop is in a resolution of 72 pixels per square inch. So that's, that's not suitable for presentation. So what you would need to do is using the pull down menu for image again and clicking on image size, you would have this pull down box come up. And what I have done here is I've adjusted the resolution for the requirements for a show. So in this case, it's 300 pixels per inch and then taking the longest side and making that 1,200. So this is the image that I have ready for submission. But uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about, uh, of course, at this point I would save it, uh, the image, as a JPEG, uh, give it a title. So I've done that here. But uh, I'm going to move on to some um, more powerful techniques that uh, Photoshop has available. But like Jennifer, I want to warn you again that uh, these advanced manipulation steps uh, are not needed for submission to a show or for a, a virtual show. In fact, you would not want to do that. But I'm going to show you just a couple. And there's a whole grouping of uh, adjustments under image. I'm not able to, to show you those because the pull down menu will not stay open for me to take a picture of it since I'm using a PowerPoint here. But they're auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. So what those do is they sample the whole image or tone, tonality, and it makes an average adjustment in the whole photo. The same with contrast, and then the same with color. I'm going to show you what the color does to this photo if I use the, the auto color. And if you look quickly at the detail on the, uh, the laundry, you'll see and the shutters and the window boxes you'll see a change when I use the auto color so let's click the auto color and see what I get so we picked up a little bit of red quality in this sample and let's put it against a gray background so we can see oh never mind <laughs> uh, Anyway, let's look at the image for a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself here. What happened is it, it brightened up the yellow a little bit. It brightened up the green and the pink in the photo. And also the shutters got a little redder. And the turquoise really jumped out. I want to do one more adjustment for you. And... Uh, that would be uh, the levels. And once again, that's under image adjustment. And it's a pull down box that looks like this. You can see it's going to be R RGB. And what we have here is a little histogram of this photo. And the histogram, in this case, shows the level of black in this photo, from the left-hand side of the photo all the way over to the right-hand side. And what I want to do is level those off and adjust them so nothing is too jumpy, jumping out of, of the photo. And what you use are these little eyedroppers right here on the side. You pick up the eyedropper, the black, and you find a black area, either here or here, or in the shadow. 
you pick up the white eyedropper, you pick up the whitest eye, whitest area with the eyedropper, and you do the same with a gray, a medium gray, which might be this window box here, or it could be under the window frame here. And after that adjustment, you see that the tonality of the whole photo kind of levels out and is kind of makes a nice, even presentation. After the adjustments, then, I think we're able to look at it on a medium gray background. And that's basically uh what you do for a submission to uh a photo but i want to show you what happens on a work of art so let's look at a work of art in this case i've uploaded a photo of my robot here and it it's it's probably sized the way i want it but i would go through those adjustments for submission to a show but remember I said to you that Photoshop is a very, very powerful image enhancing program. If I did all of the steps that I just showed you and applied those to my drawing, what would happen I would be that I would lose the quality of my drawing. If I did auto tone, auto contrast, auto color, and I leveled off my pixels in the photo, I would have a very bright, bright photo image of my drawing. As exciting as that is to look at with the really bright reds and the nice intense colors, it does not look like my artwork. So I wouldn't submit it. But Photoshop is capable of doing lots of wonderful things to your art. But unfortunately, some of them can't be used when you're submitting a photo of your work. Unless you're commercial artist. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're doing it for a client, of course. Yes, a client might want, might look at my drawing and say, George, I really like your robot, but... For our, for our ad, it needs to be brighter and more intense. So I might then do this. Related software. If you're interested in using Photoshop, and it's, a, it's an interesting process to learn how to use Photoshop, but there is a stripped-down version that is still available. It's called Photoshop Elements. And Photoshop Elements 2021 is available right now. And it's available for software for either a PC or a Macintosh. Um, obviously, you guessed I'm using a Macintosh. It's, it's either uh, available on a disk or it's available as a download. And I checked it out the price just to see. I was curious to see how much it's, it's running now. Amazon, both Amazon and, and Costco have it for $69.99. And of course, when you buy Photoshop Elements, it comes with updates whenever they're available. So Photoshop and Adobe will know that you have a copy of their software. They will let you know if there's any changes to the software that you can add to your software. And uh, I think that just about does it for my demo for tonight. Um, the first one is, what do we do about uh, skewed images? How right. We, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we talked about this, right, George? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we had decided that the best thing to do is maybe do a little cropping because yeah, all these, especially Photoshop and GIMP are able to, you're able to skew an image like if you're, to get an awkward angle, but then that's going to actually warp the image. It's going to wrap the image to, to fit into that space. And that actually might change it more than simply cropping 
pop, right? Especially, I, I don't know about you guys, but as a watercolorist, I agree. It, it depends my image on always square. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how you've taken the photo. If you've taken the photo with some background behind it, you can use this, the the skew tool or and crop it crop it in or skew it in. What we're talking about is the keytone uh, keystone, keystone effect. Uh, what happens is the image tapers either at the top or the bottom or the left or the right. And and Jen is exactly correct. If you if you over correct it, it will make your image look distorted. Uh, it'll pull it at the top or pull it at the bottom or pull it from the sides. So the if you can use the cropping tool, that's the best thing to do. Or take the photo again. Yeah, right. <laughs> or take the photo again, yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have that possibility to do that. So, yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay, so there's one more. Um, what is the file size and image resolution of a photograph in an iPhone? Ah. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure, but I think it's it's 72 uh, DPI. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the camera defaults to when you upload it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you upload images in Photoshop, you find out that the file is very, very large. Uh, and you have to make an adjustment with that. And immediately because you have an image that uh, I've had Im images as big as 36 inches by 24 depending on what kind of camera I'm using right right uh, I've had them um, you know 14 by 10 depending on the size I you know I don't know about um, the iPhone per se but I, I think it generally the photos coming off of a smartphone are gonna be about 3,000 by 8,000 pixels, I think it is. And the new, the new ones wrong. are even, the new ones are even better. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. you can mess with that yeah. setting on your, on your phone. Say if you wanted to hold more pictures that, you know, I don't know if, if you wanted, so if you're just shooting for uh, the internet, then you'd want little tiny pictures or you can, especially with the new, some of the new iPhones, you can have, spectacular pictures that are yes. very high res but i think yeah. i've mostly seen around like three and five mm -hmm. three thousand by five thousand right right thank you thank you jen and george okay george this one's for you what adjustments would you consider if you are a photographer versus a painter ah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> well that's a that's a good question very good I, question yeah yeah uh ethics uh, as an artist, I my rule is that I don't do any adjustment uh, other than size and resolution. As a photographer, sometimes I'm looking to do something different with my photo. Uh, sometimes I will just print my photo as is with just minor adjustments, and then. I will enhance or uh, uh, I do what's called a an adjusted photo or an altered photo is the term I like to use. And sometimes I go in and use colored pencils and uh, bring some art into the photo. Or very often I use an antique filter, okay? without changing the color drastically or without changing the tonality, I'll then place an antique filter in front of the image. And the antique filter can be like a, an, an old piece of paper that's stained, or it can be a piece of film that's scratched. And there's many photographers that bring another element into their photography photography. So those are some things that I do. But Photoshop has a whole set of filters that create different artistic effects. 
and you can try those when if you get Photoshop elements. You can emulate different styles of art onto your photos. And there are some artists, we don't have many in the Tri-Valley area, but I have seen some artists who use one particular styled filter for all of their photos. And there, some of them can be very, very subtle, like uh, uh, a filter that looks like rain, and it causes kind of a fuzziness in the photo or a slight bit of distortion. But uh, that depends on the photographer. I know we have some photographers that don't do any adjustments at all. They, they depend on the quality of their camera. Of course, you can adjust your camera. You can change the depth of field on your camera and create some different effects as well. So that's a really complicated answer to a simple question. <laughs> right. But great, great, George. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, there's one more. Um, can one use perspective tool? Perspective tool. Which, perspective you know, tool. is, uh, oh, is that another photo editing app? I think there's actually a lot of, uh, like somebody mentioned, Affinity. There's There are a lot of applications out there that people can use. Um, you know, I kind of feel like they're probably between Photoshop, which is the Cadillac, and Preview, and Microsoft Photos, which is, you know, the Toyota clunker. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it'll get you there, but it's not going to be fun. <laughs> okay. 